All right, good morning guys. I owe you a garden tour. <laughs> it's been a while since you've had an actual garden tour. I did not do a July flower video. Honestly, I was just so busy and distracted with everything going on here in July. I just didn't really have enough time to do it and I had grabbed a few clips, but it wasn't enough to bother putting it together. And honestly, if you guys wanna see all the flowers I have in the garden, month to month or day to day go follow me on instagram because in the summer it's almost all flower pictures with a little bit of produce from what's coming out of the garden and you know some of the animal stuff thrown in there as well but let's take a look first thing you'll notice <laughs> my aisles are definitely getting very weedy this is really because i didn't have more mulch i should have re-mulched these this spring because the mulch in most of this has been here for two years now and it breaks down over time and if you don't have a good weed barrier underneath and even if you do have a good weed barrier underneath it will wear out eventually um, let's see what we have I planted okra in here it's tiny it's been in here forever I've tried feeding it it's been getting water it's in a great sun location there's no way I'm gonna get okra from that this year I'm not really sure what happened, but I'm just thinking next year I will start it indoors. Hopefully that darn greenhouse I want is going to go up and I can do it in there. Otherwise, all of the zinnia seeds I planted are coming up. And here's some echinacea. Zinnias are beautiful. The bee balm is kind of on its last leg here it looks good for the first couple weeks and then it gets powdery mildew really bad i guess bee balm is rather susceptible to that i had these little flowers pop up recently i cannot remember what they're called but they're really cute little delicate flowers let's go back this way obviously the garlic patch is cleared i was supposed to plant carrots in there and that's another one of those things that just still hasn't happened. I'm just kind of all over the place right now. But it'll get there eventually. Those carrots, it's pretty weedy around them, but actually it's kind of weedy between the carrot rows. So they're doing pretty good. I could probably start harvesting some of those now. We have more zinnia. This is a little cone flower my mom got me. I put put it here because this is where I'm going to plant it and I just haven't, I haven't done it yet. So maybe I'll do that this morning. More zinnia. Here's a little milkweed patch. More zinnia. My herb corner is kind of interesting this year. Usually I always plant a rosemary in the back and usually that would be like huge by now and it's just not. The sage is doing fine. The parsley is doing fine. Everything else has kind of <clears throat> gone to seed because, again, I just haven't really been paying as much attention to everything as I should. Here's a bunch of catnip that's blown over with the storms. I'll probably come through and just trim it off so it's out of my aisle. It won't look as nice, but at least it will be out of the way. Uh, let's see, the clematis has bloomed a few times. Looks like maybe it's gonna get another little bloom for me. So that's been fun to have it kind of blooming off and on throughout the season. This milkweed has two monarch caterpillars on it, although I they were pretty big and I haven't seen them for a few days. My green stock garden is doing really good. Obviously there's weeds in it that I need to pull but lots of carrots growing in it and then lots of kale <laughs> because I just took the soil from an area where I think the previous owners had a compost pile years ago and I'm pretty sure they must have had kale in it or threw kale in there because every time I've ever pulled soil from that area, it grows kale every time. These were sweet pea flowers. I need to come through and start popping off the little seed pods before they open up and drop them everywhere because I don't want them growing here 
next year on their own. So it's raining all day today. A little break right now, but so I probably won't be harvesting those right now because they're wet. Dahlias are doing really good. A bunch of different varieties coming up. I keep taking cuts and putting them in the house because I just love the dahlias. I have this beautiful white rose, which I don't think, I can't remember if I'd shown you guys it or not. I found it on clearance for like a dollar. It's just a mini rose. And roses are one of my favorites. So if I see one, especially that's cheap. You know how I am about cheap or free things. <laughs> so then I got it. Um, the raspberries are done. Look at how pretty that dolly is. Not even open all the way and still beautiful. But yeah, raspberries are done. My zucchini plants that I planted over here, there's one here and one there. I really should just pull them and call it. And then I have two summer squash, one here and here. The back one is kind of meh. I mean, I'm getting a few from the front one. Again, I've fed these, I've watered them, they're in a good sun spot, so I'm not really sure why they're doing so poorly this year. But my mom grows zucchini and summer squash like a madwoman, so I always end up with a bunch from her that I feed some to the chickens. So honestly, I could just never grow zucchini and summer squash again and just share with her. <laughs> um, in here, I have my onions and leeks. The onions <laughs> are really ready to be harvested. You can see they flopped over. I need to get them out of here. The sooner the better. I'm Maybe this weekend, since again, it's really going to be wet and rainy today. And it's just not really an ideal time to harvest anything that you want to store. Not when it's wet. <laughs> um, over here, see this is, this should be aisle. But the weeds are just, and there was even... I don't know if you can see it. There was an actual weed barrier under the mulch here, and that's just how bad it's came down. The stargazer lilies have bloomed. There's one over there, but he flopped over in the last storm. But isn't it beautiful? And you can smell this from across the yard. It's very fragrant. Love this little zinnia. It's a gorgeous color. And I have a lime one over here. See that like peachy color on the other one in this lime? Those are not colors I would normally put in my garden because I like more of the blues and the purples and the pinks and the reds, but in the zinnias I kind of love them in every color. So I just get all of them. You can see my little zinnia patch is doing pretty well and there are Lots of dahlias to the front. Not all of these ones have bloomed yet, and some of them I really should have staked up because they've fallen over and are blooming over here. But lots of them. I should come through and weed it a little bit, but the butterflies and the birds and just everything loves this stretch. And I have been cutting some, but I mean, there's hundreds in here that need to bloom yet. Um, this was another really pretty rose. I don't know if I showed you this in the last gardening video or not. This is what it looks like. This again I got on clearance and it smells fabulous. But the Japanese beetles have been enjoying it a little bit. So she's a little beat up, but she'll be fine. The um, elderberries are ripening. So... Well, every day or every couple days I'm coming out and finding the most ripe bunches. This one's getting close and picking them off because otherwise the birds will eat them all. And the birds already get the ones that are up high that I can't reach. So I try to get as many as I can. I'm actually working on a video of just talking about how I harvest the elderberries and showing you how I do it and how I store them. But that's not, not quite ready. And then, look at what I got. I finally have a table and chair, little bistro set for the shade corner. <laughs> the shade corner is not really shady anymore since all of my trees are gone. That's totally fine. I was anticipating this. I'm actually planning on grabbing 
the trellis that holds the trumpet vine up by our garage and moving it down here. It's pretty tall. It's like eight or nine feet tall. I'm going to put it right there next year and then that'll give me some shade and I may end up doing another one on that side of the fence like where the hummingbird feeders are and that'll shade this in a little bit more and then this table and chairs will get moved into that area but as you can see there's a bunch of milkweed growing up in there and I don't want to disturb the milkweed because it's good for the butterflies so right now this is totally fine to be here next year I will deal with it or maybe in the fall I haven't decided and this cute little peacock thing I got from my mom it solar charges and glows in the dark I don't even know if it's turned on it's way back here in the back corner though so I wouldn't even see it glowing unless I came back here looking for it more zinnias and all of my Brussels sprouts are doing really well these are all dry beans also <laughs> flourishing I cannot believe how packed they are on that trellis and honestly they could have had like a 10 foot tall trellis happily which is kind of cool um the broccoli um we kind of got broccoli out <laughs> we were eating so much broccoli so and like I said before we'll still eat it like this when it's gone to flower because the flowers just taste like broccoli it's fine but so we're still getting a few little broccoli heads otherwise a lot of it's going to seed and I'm just gonna let it and I'm not even gonna collect it I'm just gonna let it drop here because I'm kind of curious to see if I will have a bunch of self-seeded broccoli here next year which would be really fun because broccoli is not something that I start by myself these were all from my mother-in-law but yeah, so we're still kind of munching on broccoli. The chickens are still munching on broccoli and a bunch of it's going to seed. I'm really impressed with how long these are still putting off broccoli heads. I mean, this is August. It's very hot. You would think these would just be pretty much immediately bolting. The peas are kind of done. It was just not a good weather year for peas. So I had a few handfuls. <laughs> But other than that, they just did not taste good. So those have mostly gone to the chickens. I might try again in the fall. We'll have to see. I have to start thinking about that pretty quickly here. The lettuce that's all in here that's bolted and the spinach. I've just been slowly pulling up and feeding to the chickens. You know, the babies are locked in their own little space and they're not allowed out to free range and probably won't be until they're about three months old. So I like to bring them different greens and vegetables and stuff every day so that they're getting you know, a well-balanced diet without ever having to leave their safe space. Um, this patch, I think some of it definitely looks like it's kohlrabi seed that I spilled, but then some of it also looks like maybe it's Brussels sprout seed that I spilled. So it doesn't matter. It was kind of like a weird little in-between area and I'm just going to leave it all grow. This is the back side of that row of zinnias and here you can see some of the dahlias coming up there's some more this little cosmo that ended up in there randomly these mulberry trees i had really wanted to get out this year but honestly <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna get my orchard space cleaned soon enough to plant them there this fall so at this point i'm thinking they're just gonna stay until next spring <coughs> which is the same as this raspberry mess. All of these raspberries are getting the heck out of my garden. And I know they're like overgrown and in the aisles and popping up everywhere. And that'd probably drive a lot of people nuts. But my thought is that I want to transplant all of these little starts and all of the big ones into my future berry patch, which was just cleared with the logging. So I don't want to just rip these out and kill them. I'm just going to let it be a hot mess for a while. And then when I move them, I'm going to have a ton of starts instead of just a handful of them so there is a method to my madness guys I know <laughs> this is like craziness right now but it makes sense in my mind and that's all that matters because it's mine <laughs> my poor gooseberry plant really does need to get planted I might get him out and just put a fence around him and call it good 
the potatoes are almost ready to harvest, which is going to be interesting because I have pumpkins vining and growing up into the potatoes. Um, behind the potatoes on these trellises, we do have cucamelons growing. Let's see. Um, we've eaten a few of them. They really do just taste like a kind of lemony cucumber. I'm not really impressed with them. I'm waiting to see what the kids think about them to decide if I want to grow them or not. I have a big garden, so I can grow a wide variety of things. But at the same time, if it's not something we're really enjoying, I don't want it to take up the space. I just, I'm not interested. Um, over here, <laughs> a little bit of disappointment. So my potatoes, or not my potatoes, my tomatoes are doing terribly. I've definitely harvested some. We've been eating like cherry tomatoes forever. I've gotten some frozen already for the year, but they have blight so badly that my tomato harvest is going to be absolutely nothing like it was last year. And I have more plants than I had last year, so that's disappointing. Now we have blight in the soil here, so I move my tomato plants every year. I make sure I'm taking all the pieces of the plant out and, you know, putting it in my fire pit at the end of the season. I try to be as careful as possible, but for whatever reason, it's just really bad this year and the plants are just kind of miserable. <laughs> and I mean, it's sad. I was hoping that once all these trees got opened up, having more sunlight would, you know, encourage them to grow faster and they'd be able to fight the blight a little bit better, but it's just kind of taking over. And I gave up trimming the diseased leaves off because I was like, it's almost every single leaf and branch of the plant that's infected at this point. So the only other thing to do would be to rip them out and I'm not not quite willing to do that yet so we're just gonna go with having kind of a crappy tomato year but that's okay um this is some of the trumpet vine that i transplanted last year it's <coughs> coming up very well and then this is morning glory it's gonna be really cool when it's blooming all the way but you can see we have one up on my tippy toes <laughs> one little morning glory um basil Holy crap, has been amazing this year. I have so much basil and pesto mixed up and saved for the winter, and there is so much more out here. If anybody that lives around here needs some basil <laughs> for whatever, let me know, because we're like swimming in it, and I can't even keep up with it. I'm feeding it to the chickens, because especially, I think that one is Thai basil. That one's bolting really badly. It's actually annoying me because it's like constantly in flower. And I guess if basil flowers and goes to seed, the plant just dies back. So I've been really trying to stay on top of it. Now this is my cucumber and like snap bean mess. <laughs> we had a little bit of rain and I swear the grass and weeds grew up like six inches overnight. It looks ridiculous. But we've been getting tons of cucumbers, which is really nice. This trellis actually works really well for the cucumbers. And I have all the ground cherries in front of the cucumbers, and they are doing fabulous. And my snap beans, I have so many, I don't even know what to do with them. These are a dragon tongue bean. They get pretty long, and they don't seed out at this length, which like a green bean would. So that's nice. Maybe there's a little bit in there, but for the most part, it's still just like the meat of the plant without the little seed inside. And then I do have some green beans. Those are see the darker colored leaves. These are actual green beans. But it's been great. The kids and I just kind of snack on these all day long <laughs> in and out of the garden. And then I actually haven't even cooked any yet. We've been eating so many of them fresh that when I pick a bunch and bring them inside, we're kind of beaned out by the end of the day. So we don't want to like saute them and eat them with dinner. So all the extra ones have been going into the freezer and then I can use them in the winter, which will work just fine. 
But yeah, see more zinnia. Um, <laughs> more of my sad tomatoes. And it's funny because the tomatoes are right there and the peppers are right here. The peppers are doing fabulous. I'm going to have tons of peppers. I love these ones with these leaves and the striping. Isn't that gorgeous? But yeah, so tons and tons of peppers. I've got three or four jalapeno plants down there. I don't even know what I'm going to do with that many jalapenos. I might have to make cowboy candy, which I haven't made it in a few years, but that's pretty delicious if you have never had it. And then we have the corn. Ooh, and my gladiolas as I walk past them. They are starting to open. I cut one, a red one last night that was about at this stage and I took it inside to sit with some more of my cut like zinnias and dahlias. But I'm really happy with how this gladiola patch turned out. Remember I saved all of these so I didn't buy any gladiolas this year, and I have at least a hundred here. So, good morning, Katie Mae. <laughs> She's eating the leaves off of the trees that were cut down from over here. As you can see, my lovely tree pile, um, which isn't great. She shouldn't be eating those, but when they're there, it makes it kind of easy. So, my corn <laughs> is interesting. These two rows were one type of corn in my first planting. These rows were a different type of corn and planted later. So I don't know if these ones are just bigger because it's a different type or if they're bigger because they were planted later and they had more time to develop left after the trees were gone. Like these ones were already kind of done growing when they cut the trees. They didn't get much taller. These exploded with growth once the trees were cut down. And I should get a pretty decent corn harvest this year. I mean, even when I've had stunted corn, I end up with a pretty decent amount, enough that we eat some and we freeze some and, you know, it works. We like sweet corn. <laughs> Who doesn't though? Um, and so far I've been lucky to not really have too many pests with corn unless I let it get like overripe, which honestly at that point, it's not even really good to eat, it, like the texture's off, so I don't mind giving it to like the squirrels at that point, or my chickens. Um, and here, so this is sweet potato, doing great. That's my delicata squash, <laughs> he's going everywhere. Um, I do have two or three watermelon plants in here. I don't think I'm going to get any watermelons from them because they're way behind. But honestly, I just don't have the heart to pull them. So I'm just going to let them do their thing, even if doing their thing isn't really anything. And then that's acorn squash, acorn squash, garbage truck going by in the background. <laughs> um, and then I have a few pumpkin plants. You can see this is the winter luxury pumpkin. That'll be like a kind of a white flesh pumpkin. And then... This one is going to be more like a normal orange pumpkin. And then the last thing to really see in here is my sunflower patch. It's very happy. I know it's weird because there's all these different sizes, but I had five or six different types of sunflower seeds. And I just mixed them all together and threw them in the ground. So we have these teeny tiny ones, which are a teddy bear sunflower. And then we have this dark one, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be an autumn sunflower. It's more like a reddish, like a dark red color. And then this big one is probably a mammoth sunflower. And then we've got, I mean, we just have all of the sunflowers. All of the sunflowers, but I just spotted a little <laughs> naked child wandering around in the background. So that is it for the garden tour for today. Um, try to keep you guys more updated on now that the craziness is gone. And I still need to give you guys the tour of what the property looks like with all the trees gone. I mean, you can kind of see it. It's weird. It's really weird. But it's exciting, even though it's a lot of work. So... 
Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys are going to have a great weekend.